Let's go back in time 65 million years ago, specifically to the day of the asteroid impact on planet Earth, just a few hours before the collision. The location we are currently in is what is now the territory of Mexico in North America. The truth is, the situation here is characterized by tranquility and stability. Plants are abundant everywhere, and their forms are strange and captivating. Their leaves are large and completely different from the plants in our era. The creature over there is a type of mammal, and the one that flies is not a bird or anything, but it is a type of lizard. And be careful because what is happening to us now is an encounter with a dinosaur called Tyrannosaurus. It is a very foolish dinosaur that attacks anything that moves. Let's hide behind any tree until it passes. Oh, by the way, don't worry about the dinosaur standing next to us this time. It's a friendly dinosaur called Eoraptor. We don't need to fear it. It's possible that it's actually hiding with us from the Tyrannosaurus. The truth is, the Tyrannosaurus has found our location because our voices were loud and it is currently considering attacking us. However, there is something that will make it completely forget about us and everything around it. Welcome. Everyone, I'm Davis, and in today's episode, we will talk about why the animals that coexisted with dinosaurs did not go extinct. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and grab some snacks to enjoy while watching the episode. Let's get started. A meteor with a diameter of about 20 kilometers collided with Earth. The sound of its impact was one of the loudest sounds ever witnessed on the planet in its entire history. We urgently need to travel back in time to avoid any potential damage caused by the recent collision. If we manage to survive this impact because we have a time machine, unfortunately, most of the existing organisms will not be able to survive. The meteor impact created an incredibly massive crater, the largest one you could ever see in your lifetime. It resulted in a catastrophic spread of ash and dust everywhere, to the extent that it blocked out the sunlight itself. Additionally, it caused massive tsunami waves that submerged all the areas near the shores and coastlines. Furthermore, the carbon dioxide gas concentration in the atmosphere drastically increased, leading to a rise in global temperature on Earth. Let's not forget that the land was contaminated with minerals resulting from the collision. Not only that, but the hot rocks separated from the meteor caused wildfires, leading to destruction and devastation everywhere. No one knows exactly when these tragic events will end or when life will return to its normal state. However, until that happens and until the situation stabilizes, animals face an extremely challenging struggle for adaptation and survival. Some species will become extinct because they cannot thrive in these conditions, while others will manage to survive. Unfortunately, the giant dinosaurs belong to the first category, as they were unable to adapt and survive in the new environment. In reality, not only the dinosaurs, but also over 60% of the existing creatures will be unable to adapt and will face extinction. Certainly, here's a sentence describing how large large and colossal creatures like dinosaurs went extinct due to the environmental conditions, while other organisms such as small birds, mammals, and reptiles managed to survive the catastrophe. It's important to note that the size of an organism, especially in critical conditions like these, is not an advantage. Having a massive body actually requires enormous amounts of food, while the environmental conditions surrounding you have caused a significant decrease in the availability of food. As a result, your ability to endure would also decrease. On the other hand, small creatures require very minimal amounts of food compared to larger ones. Therefore, it's possible that these small creatures had better luck and were able to survive. Let's mention a few of the organisms that existed during the event and were able to survive, and let's also delve into how they managed to escape the disaster in detail. Mammals, in their various forms, existed during the dinosaur era. Fortunately, mammals at that time were very small in size compared to dinosaurs. There were many species of mammals that were equivalent in size to rabbits and mice. Their small size allowed them to survive on minimal amounts of food and find numerous shelters and hiding places to protect themselves from the impact. Moreover, some of them had the ability to live in burrows located in aquatic environments, away from many of the problems present on land. Over time, mammals were able to reproduce and increase their numbers until they reached their current state. They have become the most predominant creatures on Earth's surface. Moving away from mobile creatures, there is another type of organism that couldn't move and had to remain in place. This was not because they wanted to die or anything but unfortunately, they lacked limbs. All they had was a collection of roots and leaves. Plants were one of the victims greatly affected by the disaster, and the planet lost a massive amount of its green surface. This was simply due to the absence of sunlight, which couldn't reach the planet's surface because of the ash and dust that spread everywhere. Additionally, the amount of oxygen during this period was extremely low, less than two-thirds of the current oxygen levels. As a result, 
most plants perished, and consequently, the entire food chain that relied on these plants also suffered. This was one of the major causes of the extinction of a large number of organisms. However, there is still a bright side to the story. The roots of these plants are still spread underground. If the plants themselves couldn't survive due to the absence of sunlight and low oxygen levels, the seeds remaining underground patiently await for the conditions to calm down and the dust cloud to dissipate. With the arrival of some raindrops, plant life will begin to flourish again, and that's exactly what happened. Returning to the animal kingdom, let's talk about the immortal king who rightfully earns the title of the Prince of Reptiles, the Crocodile. Crocodiles are one of the largest reptiles belonging to the crocodilian family. They have long bodies, short legs, and sharp teeth. In fact, they closely resemble dinosaurs in their external appearance, but they have surpassed dinosaurs in their ability to survive and thrive. Crocodiles can live for a long period of time without food. This period is not just a day or two, it can stretch up to a whole year. Imagine a creature that can survive for a year without eating. In fact, some studies suggest that certain crocodile species can survive without food for up to three years. This, in itself, is a significant reason why crocodiles do not become extinct. They find suitable refuges or hiding places, where they rest and wait until conditions improve. Once the situation settles and circumstances become favorable, they emerge again. Every few years, they take a look around and then retreat. Furthermore, the respiratory system of crocodiles allows them to live in environments with low oxygen levels. During periods when the oxygen concentration was less than half of the current level, crocodiles were able to live normally and breathe comfortably. All these factors combined have made crocodiles one of the long-lived creatures compared to other animals. If we consider the time of disaster, many animals also seek refuge or hiding places to survive. However, there is a type of animal that doesn't require actively searching for a hiding place. These animals carry their shelter on their backs, and they are the turtles. Both terrestrial and marine turtles are incredibly fascinating creatures. Despite having a similar appearance to other reptiles, they don't possess any remarkable features or perhaps even have fewer advantages than some of them. For instance, they are extremely slow, and they lack teeth. Their only defensive mechanism is the hard protective shell on their back. However, turtles have managed to survive disasters that many other reptiles, including dinosaurs, couldn't escape. Not only have turtles survived such catastrophes, but they have also preserved their entire species. Just imagine, over the course of 200 million years, turtles have been able to maintain 80% of their species without facing extinction. One of the most distinctive characteristics of turtles is their ability to undergo a long period of hibernation. Who knows, during past disasters and explosions on the Earth's surface, turtles might have been in a deep slumber, completely oblivious to the world around them. Despite the impact of the disaster on marine life, such as the decrease in oxygen levels and the absence of sunlight, the damage suffered by marine creatures was less severe compared to the damage experienced by terrestrial inhabitants. The direct impact of the planetary collision with the meteorite occurred on land, affecting the landmass, while the ocean and its inhabitants remained relatively safe and somewhat shielded from the dangers that occurred on the surface. This is why marine life was not significantly affected during the extinction of dinosaurs. For example, creatures like jellyfish have been living for 500 million years, representing an iconic symbol of resilience and antiquity. They remained unaffected by the disasters and managed to preserve their presence and existence. The jellyfish you see on vacation today belongs to a lineage that has survived for 500 million years. Not only did the jellyfish survive, but a vast number of fish species, including over 90% of the bony fish species that inhabit the waters, also managed to escape the catastrophe. Approximately 80% of shark species preserved their existence as well, despite their large size. This can be attributed to the fact that sharks are considered one of the most powerful marine creatures, characterized by agility and high physical flexibility. Thus, they are well equipped to ensure their survival. The extinction of dinosaurs and the end of the Cretaceous period presented a great opportunity for mammals to thrive and increase their numbers significantly. They began to inhabit various parts of the world, and during the Eocene epoch, mammals flourished, dominating the planet. Dense forests emerged, and plant life regained dominance, while marine inhabitants also began to settle and stabilize. Life on Earth took on a new form, and everything that had happened before was like a fallen leaf from the parent tree, waiting for the rain to flourish again in spring. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications to receive our latest videos. See you in the next episode.